Welcome to Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. I am Elder Lakeisha, and I'm very excited to be here bringing you the word again today. More than anything, I'm thankful for another opportunity given by our pastor, Dr. Laird, to bring the word on this platform. I don't take it lightly. Thank you, Dr. Laird. Thanks again. So with that being said, I want to go in and pray and get on started. So Father Elohim, we just thank you for the word that's going forward, Father. We thank you for surrendered hearts, minds, and spirits surrender will to your word and your ways that I don't fall short of your intended purpose for this word or lag behind father that it reaches those father that hearts are open and pliable to receive so we just thank you for that in the authority of Yeshua I pray amen so we're going to go ahead with faith in Elohim versus faith in the world system. We're going to continue in the foundational doctrine that my other elder sisters and brothers, as well as our pastor, have been bringing. So we're going to start with the scripture, but the question I pose to you, how long will you continue to waver between the two, the world system versus the kingdom and faith in Elohim? We're going to come from Malachim Aleph, which is a.k.a. Kings, 18 through 21. Then Elihu stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you waver, hobble, vacillate between two opinions? If Yahweh is your Elohim, then follow him. If Balah is your God, then follow him. But the people went completely silent. Mm. A lot of times that's what happens, right? So we're going to talk about this. It's a lot that you can unpack in this scripture. Like how long will I continue to hesitate through the world system versus the faith in the father? What choose this day whom you will serve? Who you going to believe? What you going to stand on? Um, I'm still struggling. I'm still hesitating. I'm I'm going back and forth. He said, how to call or I spit you out of my mouth. So we're going to dive into just exactly how we have gotten so consumed with the world system versus faith in the father like um elder demetrius and elder Derek, um along with our pastors we have so many teachings on faith in the father on um, what faith really is but i want to bring today through the um leading of the holy spirit just how we may think we have faith in the father by saying i believe in god i believe in jesus i believe in yeshua i believe in elohim but then our actions and our intent and our ways are showing something totally opposite so maybe ain't nobody really just broke it down or you haven't took the time to receive it so i want to kind of see if i can bring that through the leading of the holy spirit so we're going to go on to the next slide and I also want to talk about, we'll stay here while I talk about a little bit of and, um, when you go silent. Sometimes I'm going silent because I'm thinking, and then another time I'm going silent um, because I already know I'm doing wrong and somebody to call me up on my stuff. So either way, just something to give you think about. Am I silent and um, not Oh, I believe in the Father, but I'm going to stay silent and, and still watch and still go along with what's happening in the world. Sometimes your silence is agreeing. So we have to be real careful of why we're being silent, why we're not saying anything. So we're going to go down and break down wavering real quick, and then we're going to um, keep going. Yes. You know, we talked about waiver is um, I'm vacillating, like um, I'm going back and forth between the two. I'm limping, I'm stagnant. It kind of brings me to the um, um, so many different scriptures, but we just don't talk about it. Um, waiver, the translation is Pasak. And that's, we, we already know we bring you um, the Hebrew definition, the original meaning of things, so you can get a better and deeper understanding. So a waiver um, is pay to speak submit to slowly turn twist and hit is to surround it's a person that's living a double life by speaking one thing and slowly conforming to what they are surrounded by again we talk about that as a kingdom citizen we conform from the inside out not the outside in yeah i believe on the outside but the inside i'm going along with everything we talked about um the fact that yeah i speak I got um, the Father all on my platform. I got Yeshua, Jesus, um, Elohim. You know, I'm, I'm vacillating with just that in itself. And that's another conversation. But my content and my um, the things I post, the thing, my actions are showing something totally opposite in agreeing to the world. So that's just a little rundown. We just won't go with that. It's so much like I'm 
I have to calm myself down to not get excited to how I've been tricked or we have been tricked in the past into believing what we're doing and what we're saying is righteousness, but we don't have to live a righteous life. You know, it don't go together. But let's go to the next um, slide. This is amazing. This is amazing. So faith in Elohim, whose report will I believe? Like, I want to just kind of break down because like I say, the other elders have brought it, go back and watch it. We have so many videos. Like, I hope this intrigues you to go and do more research on um, your own behavior, your own actions and changing for one thing. A lot of times we try to look at um, somebody else with what we listen to. What is, what is it inside of me that I need to change? I'm not living right. Faith, and we know by our teachings, faith is the, way, is the way of living that comes from the way we think. We know scripture tells us in Romans 12, and to change the way we think, another kingdom, another government is here. Like, I am in this world, but I am not of this world. So we're going to talk about that going down a lot. And this is what the Father has been giving me lately. And we have a lot of teachings on family design in our um, congregation, um, fighting for the family. But fighting for the family in faith, and if I don't truly know what that is, if I'm not truly living by faith, how can I fight for the family? And so we've been talking about belief. Belief is a foundation of faith. My What I believe is what I have faith in. It's my foundation. And faith is birth in our belief system. So I have to, and we're gonna talk about that in the next slide, but we're gonna stay right here for a minute. I have to have gotten pregnant with this thought. Um, I have to have gotten pregnant with this thought and um, this idea, and I believe it, to have faith in it. And so that's so scary because people say, I got faith, I got faith, and wondering why nothing is not, anything is not happening for them. Because what do you have faith in, honey? Sir, ma'am, because if I have faith in the world system and this influencer that I have been watching and this rapper that I've been listening to, if I believe those lyrics that they're saying, if I believe that content and what's coming out of their mouth, and I am not studying the scripture, I am not, oh, I believe in the Father, but I am listening more to this rapper, this baller, this person that's influencing me, then my faith is, is, is all jacked up. Like I have gotten pregnant with an idea. I got to, I got to really filter those through the kingdom concept and follow those laws. I don't want to go too far, but yeah, that, what is it that I believe in it, that I have faith in and how is it affecting my life? How is it affecting my family? Um, is my foundation on arguing about, and this is an example that I tell my children all the time. You see so much argument on the internet about these two rappers or these two ballers or such and such lifestyle. Recently, I've seen something going on with a ball player and an actress and People are arguing back and forth about that. So somewhere in your belief system, you've been, uh, you've received that idea, that thought about their lifestyle, and you're spending your energy and time talking about and discussing that. Like, where does your, like, who, <laughs> whose report are you believing? The report of the kingdom? Um, and we're going to talk about that in scripture. I don't want to go too far. Like, are you wise in your own eyes or wise to the things of the kingdom? So you not conform to this world system. So let's go on to the next slide, baby. I am so excited about, excuse me, y'all. I have to calm myself down. So I want to go, We. I'm not going to stay on this long because we have teachings and teachings and teachings about belief system, about our six stages of conformity. Um, but like how, what I receive. And so in order to, we know faith is the foundation of belief system. So how did I start to believe in? What source of thought does that come from? So precepts we know are original thoughts that come from the uh, an idea, the source, the father in the faith in Elohim. So I have to have understanding of his thoughts, his original from the beginning. What did he think about the world system, about the, the influences? A concept is a conceived precept, the original idea and thought of the father. So I know that original thought and that I, I have conceived that I, it's, it's 
become my thought, right? And then conviction, it follows a concept. So now that this has become my thought, I'm convicted by it when I try to do anything else. So if I'm constantly watching um, all of this stuff and I'm constantly listening to all of this stuff and I have received Elohim's thought and the way he think about it, I'm going to get convicted. Um, when something comes up to do anything opposite of the kingdom and the, um, the way he has told us to live and be and do, it, it's going to convict me. And belief system is a set of convictions. So I'm getting convicted by what I believe. I can't do the total opposite of that. So I have received this idea, this thought in me, and it has become my belief system. So if I receive what's going on with the ball players, what's going on in the media, um, what, what some pastor said without really speaking the father on it and knowing that it is true, you got to study to show yourself approved, you know? So make sure you under a, um, a pastor or a leader that teaches truth, that stands on truth, not just teach it, but stand on it. And my ideology the system of ideas I accept to be true. So what am I idolizing in this world? So obviously if you vacillating, hesitating, arguing back and forth with somebody about something, then you you didn't accept that thought to be true. And can't nobody tell you anything until you, you know, we've talked about it. Detox your belief system, make that exchange, tear down, repent, tear down that thing that's been trying to tear down you, that's been consuming you, destroy it, never to go back to it. But how am I going to destroy something that I'm constantly watching, that I'm constantly meditating on? Because I'm not meditating on the word. I'm definitely not meditating on the word when I got the when I got the audacity to go back and forth and argue. We don't do that in the kingdom. Are you my opinion? We're not allowed to speak our opinion. We speak truth. We stand on truth. <laughs> and the philosophy, it's become my lifestyle. It, it's becoming who I am. So my report, the report that I believe is the report of the kingdom. I'm following the laws of the kingdom and I'm standing on it. I'm aware of what's trying to destroy. Oh, I'm going too far. Let's go because it's down the line. Um, this is just, it, it excites me um, and to be able to be get convicted behind something that I know I'm not supposed to do for my embitterment, not to get offended by it. But let's go. Okay. Again, how long will we waver and vacillate between the two? Okay. We've discussed all of that. So we have Mishlei three and seven. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear your hover and depart from evil. So a lot of times when we're listening to these things and constantly going back to oh, back and forth with people on the internet and in our home, I've seen it happen at homes, on jobs, about the, just the world system. They're arguing about it. It says you being wise in your own heart, fear your habit and depart from from evil. And that's where we are in this world. We're not. We don't fear the father, you know. We and we don't fear. We just feel like, okay, I can say I believe and things going to be all right for me. I can do this and live this way. You know, you you got to depart from that evil. And, and uh, I don't already been into the media teaching, which is going to come down the line, but it's, it's just everywhere. So I feel like, okay, I see something as an ambassador that I know is, is not of the father. And then I'm going back and forth watching it over and over again but the first time i watched it i already knew that it wasn't of the father so why am i repeatedly watching something allowing that to get in my belief system versus already knowing this is something i don't even need to be watching he said i guard your eyes and your ear gate we got to be real careful depart from that evil now this is another way um um corinthian are left one in 27 but elohim has selected for his purpose, the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, revealing their ignorance. And Elohim has selected for his purpose, the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And it's like, I was just revealing their fraternity. I can't say that word, for, for like revealing the fray of the weak. And so, um, in my weakness, I am found strong. I don't care what the world is thinking and how the world thinks. 
I can stand alone knowing that I'm standing with the Father and my strength lies in Him. Elohim, the, I mean, Yeshua even looked weak on the cross, but it was He was stronger than anybody. He was standing for a purpose. So when we're watching these things and we're look, looking at all of these things and we're receiving from the world, it really shows who you are. I don't care if you say you believe, but if you're constantly sharing stuff that, that's totally opposite, okay, I believe in the Father and the Father helped me get along in, in the place that I'm at, but all of my content is influential in a total opposite. It's showing everything opposite of the world. It's revealing just truly how ignorant we, we are for watching. They ignorant and they're doing it and they got to deal with that. But if we're constantly watching, commenting and focusing on that versus focusing on the things of this world, then we're, we're in our ignorance. Like, and, and it makes us, I'm strong in him. But he, the father's plan was to, I don't care what the, what you're boasting about, you boast in me. If it's not in me, then you need to sit down somewhere. But if not, I'm going to show you. Yeah, you go, you're going to be known by your fruit. So I, it's just like, all of this is, is exciting to me, but also it's sad. It's not, it's really happening in this world. We have a lost world. Um, we're lost out here and we're thinking we're found. The enemy really has us. Um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. The enemy really has us in a place of um, that, that we really think that we are, are, are living for the Father. Some of us know we're not and others are just really being fooled at um, I'm doing this in the name of Elohim or just an excuse so you can continue to do what you're doing. So we're going to move on to the next scripture. I'm so grateful for the kingdom and just really um, the father really uh, having a nudge on my heart to to see and to believe and to change, you know, for, come from religion to really rule and uh, to be in a kingdom ambassador. So um, as we go into this, the source of thought is more important than the thought itself. And in the world, where did I get that thought? You know, people just throwing things out here. Where can I go in scripture to show that this is what the father says? It's just um, the saying, if, um, you know, I, I, um, I have to believe to receive, you know? No, I have to believe to receive. No, I believe and I receive. But it, are my actions proven that I believe? If I don't believe, I won't receive. If I don't have faith in who the Father Elohim is, if I my actions are showing totally different through my arguments, through the way of my lifestyle. Yes, I say I'm a kingdom citizen and that I'm living for the Father, but there's always chaos and turmoil and frustration and anger that have I really believed? Have I really conceived? I think I have this one out of place because I wanted to talk about the preconceived notions first. So we're going to um, move down the line. Yes, the, yes, the cause and effect, um, my apologies for that, the cause and effect of a preconceived notion, like where did that thought come from? I, I think it both can go together. We'll go back and forth, but I'm going to go right here. Like, we talked about precept. We talked about pre. It's a before thought. Where did I get that thought come from? I have, I mean, where did that thought come from? Did it come from the father or did it come from the enemy? Uh, you know, we, in scripture, there's, I think Elder Derek talked about um, Kepha, where when he said you are the, the um, your father, the devil, you know, so you have to think about it. It's either once, it's only two sources of thought. It either comes from the father or it comes from the enemy. Where did I get pregnant from this? Where is the root to, that this thing started and that is causing my life to be in turmoil or my life to go in a way that is pleasing to the Father? And so I want to kind of break it down before I go too much talking about it. And conceived, um, it's high, um, resh, um, high, and it's to be pregnant. We know conceived, conception is to get pregnant. Um, so I got pregnant with this thought, and now I have faith in it. I gave birth to it, and I have faith in it. So we know high means to behold, to reveal, to look. We know rich means the intent and purpose of a prince or a ruler. And we know high, again, is a revelation of heaven on earth. I have revelation of heaven on earth, and I know his intent and purpose for my life. So either I have revelation of 
the father or have revelation of the world. And my life is going to go according to what I believe, what I have faith in, what I receive. So again, if I have gotten pregnant with the thought that is not of the father, then I need to get in position to detox. I need to repent. Um, Father, forgive me. I know not, you know, it's a scripture. I know not, they know not what, when Elohim, when Yeshua said, forgive them, they know not what they do. But now that we're in a position that there's so much knowledge out here and that we know what we do, do need to do is just repent for that thing. Um, get in position to, um, um, as we repent, that thing be destroyed and uprooted, asking the Father, but not only asking, but being in position to make that change and that exchange um, if, uh, as we go forward. So we're going to go on to go back to that slide we were on. So again, um, if I don't believe, I definitely won't receive. And I need to know that believing is not just saying a thing. Believing means I have to change my mindset. I have to, um, and not believing without an action coming with it, you know? Uh, again, like I, I might change the way that I thought about that thing. And do, and it's like a lot of times, um, this is what um, I've grown up in. This is all I'm going to have. You know, it's always been like that in my life. If you don't believe that you, that you deserve it, then you don't deserve it. As a man think in his heart, in his mind, so is he so you got to believe that you deserve that thing in order to have it uh learning and up learning um uh, up learning the thing how to be constructive and productive in our thinking again like uh, oh my goodness i'm gonna talk about it right now but just like being counterproductive in um ways that i think i'm being productive i had my mindset to go on um to social um the social sites, and I'm going to take care of this, and I'm going to do this, but I get all sidetracked. So I have to really be um, reconstruct the way I think in order to be productive. That's what it was. I'm sorry that it's like that, but I have to reconstruct the way I think in order to be truly productive because we we also know that we can look at as if that we're productive and we're just busy, busy strolling, busy um, talking to people all the time. It's like spending two hours on the phone with someone and that you could be taking that time doing stuff something constructive for the kingdom, constructive and who you call to be. Oh, and that overthinking, the thought process is from the enemy. The word tells us to think on the good things. So I have, again, if I am thinking on things that are negative, things that are not of the father, I am being um, stagnant in my movement, in my growing, then I have to ask myself, where's that source of thought coming from? You know, it's not the thought that's damaging me. It's the source of it. Have I really repented? Have I really uprooted the thing? Have I really um, started to believe in it and live an expectated life? Am I truly following the laws of the kingdom? So overthinking is rooted in, um, and um, we talked about this, uh, overthinking is ro rooted in um, witchcraft. It's rooted in, um, it's a sin. Like you, you, you really, he said, thinking on the good things is you're really not being obedient. It's rooted in disobedience, obedience and realizing these things as we talked about and truly repenting. I father can do all things through you, the Messiah who give me strength, but it's my choices in life that's causing me to be weak. Like, so do I believe these things that I'm choosing to get online, to, to have more faith in the world system versus you, Father Elohim, it's causing me to be weak. <laughs> I, I, I can't do, do all the things in the world again yet. Again, I'm not allowing my choices to weaken me. So I'm gonna I know that my time is up and I have so much more to bring going forward, but just really taking that time to, to, to examine where I am. Am I more focused on the things of the world than the things of the Father? And asking the Father to lead you in that direction, getting in um, a congregation that teaches truth, that is living truth, um, and asking the Father to help you with that exchange. So I just thank you right now. I'm asking you to subscribe, share this message, and um, thank you.